What's up, guys? It is Tuesday, January 28th. We won $2,000 last night playing around eight hours. We are now, I forgot the session rate. We will review that later, but we're around up around 4100 for the month. Uh, if we could get up to 5000 6000 it could be a salvaged, respectable month. But we uh, didn't really run into any uh, tough spot yesterday, so we just have a, a fun hand to go over. But um, let's uh, just talk about a little poker strategy before we do that, right? So the fun hand involves an unknown. And when we... So I built my strategy, poker strategy, around relentlessly pounding and unloading at the, any unknowns that come to the table. More, some people, they reg battle more. They uh, have a more um, universal way of play. They play no matter what. But my adjustments comes depending on the uh, amount of unknowns at the table. Um, so, of course, my strategy is very exploitative where if you are regular at the table, you can see that any unknown that comes, I am pounding at them. So, of course, that leads me to being exploited by the regs, right? I, they'll three-bet me lighter, and they'll squeeze and all that. But I know that. I know who the reg, what regs are capable of doing that. So, I have also set them up where I look weak, like I'm trying to pound at the unknown or isolate the unknown, only to get them to uh, try to uh, make a play at me, only to trap themselves. So, when we talk about getting better at poker... What you want to do is you want to devise a systematic system of play. And then, from that systematic of play, you make one or two adjustments at a time, right? You may be, okay, on the button, I'm going to um, increase my three betting range with these kinds of hands. And then, once you, in the long run, show that you know how to execute and stay out of trouble with these hands, then you start to systematically increase your range or expand your range, okay? Well... I can profitably play these ranges on the button. Well, now I'm going to add these ranges to the cutoff. And then you slowly add them to the uh, hijack. And that's how you improve it in poker, systematically through poker. You don't do every one, all these moves and then you don't know what worked because they all have uh, correlations with each other. So you've got to systematically improve a little bit at a time. And that's how uh, when I taught poker with the uh, online players, I told them because we had trackers that, we're going to improve certain ranges in certain positions at a time. And we've got to make sure that you can properly play these hands in the spot before we move you to those hands to another spot. And this goes systematic, systematic. And that's how we devise our strategy against unknowns that we pound, we pound, we pound. And then the regulars, we, we just don't reg battle as much as uh, you can say a lot of the regs do. So let's get to the hand, right? Um, let's set it up here. So I am in the uh, small blind, and I have around $1,400. To my left is a, I would call him a regfish. I don't, I'm not sure he's a winner, but uh, he comes, plays like early in the morning times or late at night, jokes around a lot with me. So I, uh, I joke around a lot with him, especially when we each lose small pots. We laugh at each other and make fun of each other. And uh, the joke, I was joking with him that yesterday I told him, you are a little sneaky and tricky, but you're too ugly to be a fox. So we'll call you a weasel. So we'll call, in the big blind, we have the weasel at 900. And then in the hijack, it's the unknown. He's a uh, brother who just sat down. I've never seen him before. Brought his girlfriend, sat down, and in about five minutes, doubled up. Girlfriend gave him a kiss. I guess went off to gamble. So we'll call him Blue Balls. You'll see why. <laughs> so Blue Balls has about $1,000 after uh, doubling up and uh, kind of cruising. So the play goes, uh, we have one limper. And it comes to blue balls, who limps. I look down, I have ace of spade, king of clubs. So I'll, because we have an unknown, we're going to 
build a pot, obviously, exploitatively. Anybody who knows this, knows, anybody who knows what we're doing, knows what we're doing. So we go to 40. And then, of course, the weasel, who's been trying to outplay me all day, back and forth, calls. But then it goes to blue balls, who raises to 80. <laughs> Bad move, buddy. Then, so, of course, it comes to me. We're not letting blue balls take the initiative here and trying to outplay us. So we make it to 315, knowing that probably, he'll probably fold. If he does call, then uh, because his stack size is big, that we are probably jamming all missed flops. And then we'll evaluate all made flops. And then, um, so we went to 315 and then the weasel folds and blue ball calls. And he goes, I, this is my favorite hand. I, I'm not folding this hand. <laughs> we know how favorite hands go. So the flop comes, eight, five of club, nine of club, ace of diamond. And at this point, the pot is 645, right? So we, we didn't miss the flop, so we're not jamming here. So let's go back to favorite hand ranges. What are people's favorite hand ranges are? Well, most of the time it's not some kind of pair, pocket pair. We can eliminate that. It's not really big broadways. The only big broadways most people have favorites are like Queen 10 or Jack 10 suited. And then they have like those low middle ranges like 8, 9, 5, 6, 7, 6, 7, 8, 4, 5. So if you look at those ranges that contain a 9 or a 5, or maybe a club draw, then those ranges hit this board, right? And so Blue Balls has, a, he call, has around $600 left, a little bit over $600 left after calling off 315. So this range of hands here hit his hand, and people who have favorite hands, if they hit the flop, they're not letting it go. So rather than blowing him off a pair, plus some kind of runner backdoor draw, I bet to 215 into a $645 pot, knowing that anything that Blue Ball has on this board cannot fold. So then Blue Ball's start grabbing his chips and then he goes all in. Of course, where's the call? River come, turn comes, eight of diamonds. And the river comes, the ten of spades. Blue balls, moans, and we can, we got this. Flips over, ten jack of clubs for a Flush draw and on the turn picked up an open ended flush draw but missed. And we scooped a uh, nice $2,000 pot. That was pretty much the pot of the night. But the story goes right as Blue Balls is shipping his stack to us, his girlfriend walks in and she goes, Why you do that? And of course, he just throws his hands up and walks off to the restroom, and his girlfriend walks out of the poker room. Sorry, Blue Balls, but look, you're getting Blue Balls tonight. <laughs> well, I didn't mean to do it, but you should never bring your girlfriend to the poker table, because if you win, she's going to ask you, where are you taking her out to eat? And what are you buying her for, uh, for shopping? If you lose, why do you do that for? No, you're not very smart, are you? It's a no-win situation, guys. Just play poker. Keep it a man's game. You keep the women at home. All right, that's it for the day. I hope that was entertaining. So let's hit the gym for our uh, third day of the week. See ya.
What's up guys? So we are back now. I hope that what I'm telling you is motivating you to uh, get started today, if not yesterday. If you like the stuff that I'm saying, send me some motivation as well with some uh, comments, likes, or follows, whatever. So yesterday we talked about some of the stuff that we do to ourselves that cause our suffering, right? And we we live an autonomous, habitual life, hopping from one desire, one crave to the next, and throughout our daily life. And these desires and crave are not only pertain to the five senses, but it also pertain to the mind, the, the sixth sense, which is the mind enjoys prattle and chatting and talking about a lot of theories about nothingness, right? We just talk all day, all day, and at the end of the day, it's just nothing. It has no, really no value to it. So we, we suffer because we chase after fleeting desires and sensual pleasures, right? It comes and we, we get it for a little bit moment. We have a little bit of taste of happiness and pleasure, and then we're right back to suffering, to working and chasing and being, you know, stressed out about all this stuff just for a little bit. So we suffer more than we have pleasure, right? So if we wanted to have more pleasure and less suffering, then we need to start working on our mental fitness. And most, and most importantly, we need to work on our perception, our vision, and our ability to see things deeper, have more insight, and have a better understanding. And an intellectual person who tell you a lot about everything on the outside world. He tell you, they will show you they know everything. But the only one thing they don't know is they don't know themselves. They don't know their game. They don't know their habits. They don't know their tendencies, their their reactions. They're just a higher programmed autonomous human. An intelligent person knows about himself, knows his game, knows his patterns, knows his habits and is able to reflect. So our goal here is not to make you an intellectual person, but we want to make you an intelligent person. We want to help you to know yourself. And if you want to know yourself, then you have to slow down and you have to start perceiving things. And you have to start to put these things into practice because everything we say, we're not trying to give you ideas or theories. Those have no value in your life. What we're trying to do is give you practical, systematic, and logical things you can do throughout your daily lives to help you improve on your mental fitness and your mental wellness. Anything that you cannot put into practice, we're not going to talk about. We're going to try to avoid because theories and all that are safe for the intellectual people. We want to be intelligent people. We want to work on ourselves and know ourselves. And... In doing so, we slowly transform ourselves. We're not trying. Yes, we change. We change a little bit our patterns and, and tendencies and everything, and our compulsions. But our ultimate goal is to transform ourselves from the inside, not from the outside. We're not trying to change our clothes or our appearance or anything. We're trying to develop patterns within ourselves that will cultivate, help us cultivate ourselves. And once and these patterns and practices, the benefits comes right when you start, not when you, not at the end of it. So when you start practicing from day one, the benefits is there, and that benefit gives you more vitality, more energy, and more just overall motivation to add more to it. So then we start to see this cycle going up of development. It's no longer a cycle of, of compulsion and reactions going downward spiral of self-inflicting pain. Now we, have, we are putting out effort, we're putting out concentration, we're putting out focus, and we're putting out perseverance and discipline in just not anything difficult, but just throughout our daily lives. The discipline of the mind to... Stay awake just for that brief one or two, five seconds. And we do that by just watching our breath. So 
throughout our lives, throughout our day, we build on top of one, a little bit at a time. We stack, 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 stack. And there's, you can do it anytime or any way you want, as long as you do it, right? It just, it's like going to the gym. The hardest thing about going to uh, exercise is getting to the gym. Because once you get there, you, it's all gravy from there on out. So you want to, throughout your daily life, you want to practice. You want to systematically build your game so that it gets better throughout your life. And once we get this, then like we said yesterday, we could have that focus and concentration. So when the tough time comes, we have that awareness, that vitality, and that energy to deal with it correctly. And then we'll, so we'll talk about this on top of, we'll talk about this tomorrow because once you can build this, then now we can start tackling harder problems such as ADA, ADHD, PTSD, which are all mental lapses due to lack of focus and concentration and the inability to direct our mind and, to, and, and persevere through the when negative emotions arise, the tough negative emotions, not the easy ones that we could just slip over. That's it for the day. We're going to run the heater. So let's keep going. I'll see you tomorrow. Hasta mañana.